your blood pressure medication. One study has shown that taking them before we go to bed rather than first thing in the morning can over a 10 year period halve your chances of having a stroke. Hello, my name's Russell Foster. I'm professor of circadian neuroscience here at the University of Oxford, and we're rethinking the science of the body clock and how we can use this information to improve health and well-being. We can think of our circadian rhythms as, as representing an internal day within. As we sit on an earth that rotates once every 24 hours, our world changes profoundly. The circadian clock anticipates these predictable events within our environment. And before we actually wake up, blood pressure is rising, metabolism is increasing to deal with the, the, the new demands of the, of the morning and increased activity. And of course, at the other end of the day, a metabolism goes into a different state in preparation for sleep. Lots of other changes occur. What's really fascinating is that whilst we're asleep, there's tissue repair and growth. Essentially, everything we do is being tuned, uh, increased or decreased in response to these varied demands of the rest activity cycle. So we have this internal biological clock ticking away, uh, but it's not exactly 24 hours. It needs a daily adjustment to align this internal clock to the external world. And the most important factor for that is light, particularly at dawn and dusk. So light exposure sets the internal clock to the external world. Perhaps the best example of a mismatch between the internal clock and the external world is jet lag. When we fly to a new time zone, uh, the internal clock is not adjusted uh, to, the, to the new time zone. And what's required is exposure to the light-dark cycle in the local time environment to drag the clock forward or backwards. Night shift work is another example of a mismatch between biological time and the demands of, of work. In this case, individuals are trying to work while their entire physiology and their biology is saying they should be asleep. And then the assumption has been that night shift workers eventually adapt to the demands of working at night. And for 97% of individuals, they don't. The consequences of this long term can be very severe. So we now know that there are higher rates of uh, cardiovascular problems, heart attacks, stroke, higher rates of metabolic abnormalities such as type 2 diabetes and obesity, and even higher rates of cancer in long-term night shift workers. And indeed, the World Health Organization has now categorized night shift work as a probable carcinogen. <laughs> Because our, our biology is so dynamic and, and changes across the 24-hour day, the efficacy of drugs will change over the day. For example, our immune system is turned up during the day, and particularly during the first half of the day, and then turned down whilst we sleep. So morning vaccination has been shown to be more effective in generating an antibody response than afternoon vaccination. Another really key area has been in the timed delivery of chemotherapy. And the results are quite remarkable. In one study, uh, the same drugs, the same concentration, uh, but given at two different times. At one time, the survival after five years was 45% of the group. In the same drug, different times time, that dropped to 10% of the group. And we're now getting an understanding that this is true for many different sorts of drugs. Sadly, this information about drug timing is not often integrated in, 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 in drug delivery. But the capacity to use this information is just a bit overwhelming with the huge demands that the medical profession is having to face at the moment to deliver any sort of treatment. I think it will come, uh, but it's coming slowly.
Now, quite rightly, um, mice are used as the primary animal to test drugs before they're used uh, in the clinical environment. But it's important to remember that mice are nocturnal animals. And there was a, a recent example of this where a medication was developed that would improve the outcomes of stroke. It was given to mice when the scientists came in first thing in the morning and the drug was really effective. So they thought, great, we'll now give it first thing in the morning uh, in humans. And the drug didn't work at all. But of course, the drug in mice was being given at the beginning of the sleep phase during the day. And of course, in humans, it was being given during the beginning, the active phase during the day. And then they went back and they gave the drug during the beginning of the active phase to mice and it didn't work. So it's a great example of where drug development must take time of day into account. And there's an argument that there may be a very large number of drugs sitting on shelves all over the world that work really well in mice, but when uh, first tried in humans, they failed. And of course, what they have never done is take time of day into account. Sleep is a bit like shoe size. One size absolutely does not fit all. And there really is a morning type and an evening type. Um, we've now identified key genes which are associated with morningness and eveningness. The first thing that we all need to do is to work out what our body clock type is and, 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 and how much sleep that we need. So are you able to function optimally and at a level that, that you find satisfactory during the day, then you're probably getting enough sleep at night. But if you need an alarm clock to wake you up, if you're feeling tired and irritable throughout the day, if you are dependent upon caffeine and sugar rich drinks to get you through the day, these are all very strong indications that you're not getting the sleep that you need. If we don't get enough sleep, then our memory begins to fail. And it's not just our memory, it's our ability to come up with new solutions to complex problems. Tired brains, tired people will remember negative experiences, but are much more likely to uh, forget positive experiences. So tired people's entire worldview is based upon negative rather than positive experiences. And these are just some of the really critical things that are going on whilst we sleep. So not getting enough sleep and night shift work is so much more than feeling tired at an inappropriate time. It's a major impact across the health spectrum.